Hey folks, this is Kalani. We're getting some exciting information about the potential war coming in the next expansion, and BlizzCon hasn't even properly started yet. Part of the BlizzCon goodie bag is a few pages of the new book by Christy Golden, Before the Storm. These pages detail Sylvanas' attitude towards being the Warchief of the Horde and her plans going forward. She spends some time with her champion, Nathanos, before marching around Ogrimmar in celebration of our victory over the Legion. But the last page has some pretty interesting insights on what Sylvanas is hoping comes next, or at least what she's building up to. I'm not sure I understand, my queen. Nathanos said. They had not had much time for private conversations. The war had taken everything they could give it, every day, and most of the time they were surrounded by listening ears. Of course the Horde needs funds and its members. It is not the members that concern me, it is the army. I have decided I will not dissolve it. He turned to look at her. They think they've come home, he said. Is that not the case? It is, for the moment, she said. Injuries need time to heal, crops need to be planted, but soon I will call upon the brave fighters of the Horde for another battle, the one you and I have both longed for. Nathanos was silent. She did not take that for disagreement or disapproval. He was often silent. That he did not press her for more details meant that he understood what she wanted. Stormwind. Holy cow, I mean, it's right there in black and white. We don't know where in the book this will be, but if everything is quiet and they're just celebrating our victory, then it might be safe to assume it's somewhere near the beginning. I'll give you a link in the comments section below to the full preview of this chapter, so you can go ahead and read the rest of it at your leisure. But it seems like Sylvanas isn't all that interested in playing nice with the Alliance now that the threat from the Legion is dealt with. So we might be looking at an all-out war between the two factions once again. I don't know how I feel about that, considering we've been working together for a little while now, and Anduin is on the throne of Stormwind as well. He's always been about peace between the two factions, but I guess it wouldn't be World of Warcraft if we all held hands and danced around the campfire singing happy-go-lucky songs about friendship. We need blood and iron and anger. So the first way I see this all playing out is simply how Sylvanas plans it all. We take some time to mend our wounds and get ready for the struggles ahead of us while the armies of the Horde are built up in preparation of war. But what does the Alliance do during that time? Surely they would notice the Horde building up their armies during what is supposed to be a peaceful time. The little part where Sylvanas says, I have decided I will not dissolve it is interesting. After our struggles in Argus, did the Horden Alliance come together to talk about winding down aggression and focusing more on diplomacy rather than slaughtering each other? If that's the case and the Alliance think everything is hunky-dory, they might not be ready for a Horde invasion. Stormwind very well could either be destroyed or taken over in the name of the Horde. That would be a huge change to the world and could actually be really cool. The Alliance would need to obtain another capital though, and there are a few choices on the board. They could take and use Gilneas, which would be a powerful stronghold in very close proximity to the Undercity, which would definitely make Sylvanas nervous. Or they could take the Undercity itself and rebuild Lordaeron. We did see the Lordaeron logo in the BlizzCon video, which was taken down quite promptly after we all went crazy about what the Lordaeron logo could mean. Maybe this is related in some way. Either way, we could see some capital swapping going on, which could really shake up the gameplay for the next expansion. The Horde would have a main base somewhere in the south portion of the Eastern Kingdoms for once, and the Alliance would maybe gain a capital in the north. I really wonder if the dev team would dare go that far though. Taking Stormwind away from the Alliance would be huge, and I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't be all too happy with it. Now, if you are wondering why Sylvanas would be so keen on taking Stormwind, there might be a few things going through her head. The first could be simple revenge for how the Alliance treated the Forsaken at the very beginning. That hasn't ever sat too well with the Forsaken, and I'm sure they're still a little sour about it. But Stormwind is just chock full of delicious humans, which, once slaughtered and brought back from the grave, would swell the ranks of Sylvanas' army quite substantially. So that's all fine and dandy. Sylvanas wants to murder everyone in Stormwind and wants to use the Horde and its armies to accomplish her dreams. But what of the other Horde leaders? Pretty much every other Horde leader has sort of a grudging respect for Sylvanas. She might not be best friends with any of them, but they respect her abilities to lead the Horde. But I wonder how many of them would follow her if they felt their actions were not in the best interests of the Horde. From the same sample chapter, we know Sylvanas realises this. 
She was not fond of any of them, them being the leaders of the Horde, but Varric Sarfang was one to whom she gave grudging respect. He was intelligent, strong, fierce, and like Bane, loyal, but there was something in the Orc's eyes that always put her on alert when she gazed into them. The knowledge that if she misstepped too badly, he might well challenge her, perhaps even oppose her. Sylvanas knows this could end badly, so I wonder if she has a plan to make sure everyone follows her, but if they don't, I do see another option for how all this plays out. If the other leaders of the Horde oppose her, Sylvanas might end up being the bad guy after all. If she's cast out of the Horde to preserve the bonds of friendship between the Horde and Alliance, that could be an interesting twist. You might be thinking, well, that would never happen, it would leave the Forsaken without a leader, and they'd obviously all follow Sylvanas anyways, and you'd have this awkward situation because Forsaken is still a playable character. That might not be true. While Sylvanas has been Warchief, She's been spending a lot of time in Ogrimmar, taking care of war chief things, and her absence in the Undercity has been felt by many. So much so that they've created their own governing body called the Desolate Council, and from the same chapter we can see that they apparently don't all agree with Sylvanas' actions on the Broken Isles. So we have leadership in the Undercity without Sylvanas, and a council that apparently doesn't follow her blindly. That allows a setup for Sylvanas to be kicked out of the Horde without having to deal with issues regarding the Forsaken, even though I'm sure plenty of players who actually play Forsaken might be sour that their leader could end up being the target of our wrath in the next expansion. So, we could be looking at war between the Horde and the Alliance with some potential for city swapping, or maybe Sylvanas isn't going to be War Chief for very long. One thing that's going to be very important is what actually happens in the book, because wherever the book finishes is likely where the expansion will be kicking off, so if Sylvanas assaults Stormwind in the book, then we might see the aftermath in World of Warcraft, but if the book ends where Sylvanas is just about ready to start a war, the expansion could kick off with a huge bang. But that's it for this video. Make sure you go ahead and read the rest of the chapter if you're interested in the story going forward. It's a really great read and I can't wait for the book to come out proper. What do you think this means? What do you think is going to happen? Leave all your thoughts and theories in the comments section below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave and if you want to see more make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I will see you next time.